Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus the Tribble. So this video is about dirty electricity. Now, um, what the heck is dirty electricity? I've talked a lot about, you know, Wi-Fi and 5G and 4G and, you know, the, 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 all the studies that have shown, like, this stuff doesn't have very nice effects on our health. Uh, and several people have asked me about dirty electricity. Uh, so, okay, first of all, what is dirty electricity? Well, normally you have a 50 or 60 hertz sine wave, uh, you know, you have alternating current, which I've done a video on, current uh, alternates, it switches directions many times a second, and a clean uh, AC sine wave looks something like that. So, okay, well, that's nice. Uh, dirty electricity actually looks something like the red line here. Uh, instead of a nice clean blue sine wave, you get these sort of jaggedy, nasty looking things. So. All right, uh, dirty electricity comes from the fact that we have uh, wonderful technology, for example, switching power supplies. So everything is powered by AC. You plug something in the wall, and of course your gizmo does whatever. Um, but everything these days has what's called a switching power supply, which is an AC to DC converter. And the way that uh, modern electronics converts AC to DC is by uh, it basically switches the current that it's taking from the AC from the wall. It, it ends up sort of switching it on and off repeatedly. And when you do that, you get these high frequency transients, basically that squiggly red line that I just showed you. Now, uh, switching power supplies are used in everything. Uh, the power supply in your desktop computer, that's a switching power supply. Uh, the power brick for your laptop, switching power supply. Uh, the power brick that you plug into the wall to recharge a gizmo or the USB charger you use, that's a switching power supply. Your washing machine and dishwasher, most likely these days, if they're relatively new, they have uh, brushless DC motors that are computer controlled. Your Dyson, uh, your fancy Dyson vacuum cleaner, they're famous for making brushless DC motors that are super comp compact and ultra powerful. That needs a switching power supply. So uh, even large appliances have switching power supplies, and uh, because these are switching the current on and off very rapidly, they create this, this high frequency noise. That's usually between, oh, it's like between 2 kilohertz and um, 10 kilohertz, sometimes up to like 150 kilohertz. And of course, the frequency of your, your AC electricity is 50 or 60 hertz. So we're not talking about like, you know, gigahertz or millimeter wave here. We're talking about sort of mid-range uh, frequencies. And um, the other thing that can create uh, dirty electricity are things like dimmers. Uh, those wonderful dimmers, so you can have your, your, your sassy mood lighting. Yeah, those create a lot of dirty electricity. Uh, and also solar inverters. Um, yeah, you have solar panels, and if you have a system that just takes the DC and stores it in batteries, well, that's fine. But if any point you actually have an inverter that converts that DC uh, back into AC so that you can use your appliances and such, that requires an inverter, and inverters are typically... Uh, yeah, they make a lot of dirty electricity. Um, finally, if you have a battery backup, a UPS, an uninterruptible power supply for, say, your desktop computer, those include both uh, a switching power supply and an inverter, because, of course, you have a battery, you have the AC coming in, and the battery needs to be charged with DC to get charged up, so that when the power goes out, the UPS takes the DC from your battery and inverts it into AC, so it's also got an inverter, which also creates noise. Uh, so battery backups for computers are also a, a rather um, annoying source of dirty electricity. Okay, so why do you care? Like, what's the big deal with dirty electricity? Well, for that, you're probably just better off reading uh, Samuel Milham, MD, MPH's book uh, called Dirty Electricity. It's a very short book. It's an excellent read. Um, I'll just give you a quick summary. Basically, he kind of, um, he, he, he sort of approached this dirty electricity problem uh, from the perspective of kind of an, like an epidemiologist. Um, he tells many stories in the, in the book. Probably my favorite is there was a school, and the school, they just had a cell tower installed. I think it was on the school grounds. And so, of course, you know, they had all sorts of problems. There were like, uh, you know, this huge percentage of teachers coming down with various types of cancer. 
um, a bunch of the kids in the school were being diagnosed with ADHD, blah, blah, blah. And of course, they thought it was, you know, I think at the time it was a 3G cell tower. They thought it was the 3G, the cell tower, you know, the, the, the gigahertz frequency uh, radio waves that were causing these problems. And he said, well, hang on a minute, let me come in and do some tests. So he got a dirty electricity meter and he went in and he measured values uh, that were like sky high. Uh, I'll talk about the meters and uh, dirty electricity filters in a minute, but um, just to give you an idea of why you should care, he uses a dirty electricity meter. Anything under like say 100 is relatively safe. Um, he was measuring values on the order of 2,000, 5,000, 7,000 uh, in certain classrooms in the school. And so he said, well, you know, let me just put some, some dirty electricity filters in and we'll see if it makes a difference. And of course, it did make a difference. They found things like uh, the classrooms where there were kids that were being diagnosed with ADHD, they couldn't sit still, they were kind of squirrely. All of a sudden, with the dirty electricity filters, boom, they were calm and focused and everything was awesome. So, of course, it's a really good book to read, uh, and I, I encourage you to buy a copy and uh, digest it, because um, he, of course, you know, he had to do battle with the school board and the superintendent, because, of course, they're worried about, uh, you know, legal action that might be taken by the teachers so they were saying you know calling him a charlatan and all this stuff and of course you know he was just kind of doing um, he took a very scientific approach uh, from the perspective of a doctor saying look okay here we have the problem let's use these filters does that solve your problem yes it does therefore we have proof that this is a real thing and it has real effects so um, it's a very interesting book to read uh, and after you're done reading that you'll probably want to uh, check your house out for dirty electricity Okay, so the next question is, well, how does dirty electricity actually work? Like, wh how does it have, uh, you know, these health effects on, on the human body? Uh, the dirty electricity, the noise that's on your, the AC power, wi power wiring in your house, uh, it actually capacitively couples to the human body. What the heck does that mean? <laughs> so, it's going to get hairy for a minute, but bear with me. Uh, from our good friend Wikipedia, we can read, Capacitive coupling is the transfer of energy within an electrical network or between distant networks by means of displacement current between circuit nodes induced by the electric field. The keywords there are displacement current and induced by the electric field. So, of course, you're probably then wondering, of course, what the heck is displacement current? So then we read, displacement current density has the same units as electric current density and it is a source of the magnetic field just as actual current is. However, it is not an electric current of moving charges, but a time-varying electric field. Right, so that's pretty complicated, but in short, um, capacitive coupling is caused by this thing called displacement current, and displacement current is not as the, re the result of, you know, charges, i.e. electrons, flowing through a wire. It's actually caused by an electric field. Okay, um, right. It gets kind of hairy, and if you try to model this sort of stuff, you darn near need a supercomputer to figure it out. But uh, the short and simple version is, you know those stories of, you see like, a, you know, people say, okay, you take a fluorescent light tube and you hold it vertically underneath power lines, and if it's dark enough, the tube will faintly glow if it's connected to absolutely nothing. That is actually caused by capacitive coupling. The fluorescent tube is capacitively coupled to the power lines, and as a result of the electric field caused by the power lines, the, the, uh, the fluorescent tube will actually glow faintly. Okay, so capacitively coupling, that sounds like capacitor, so what does that mean? So uh, here we have an example of a simple capacitor. And of course, when you apply a charge, a voltage, like say alternating current, um, as the current is flowing in both one direction and then the other, uh, you get a buildup of charge on one plate. One, one side becomes more positively charged, the other side becomes more negatively charged. And between those charged plates, you have an electric field. Uh, electric fields are, of course, you hear like, uh, you know, electromagnetic field, you have uh, a magnetic component, you have an electric component, you have a magnetic field and an electric field. When you're talking about things like, you know, 3G, 4G, 5G, Wi-Fi, that sort of thing, you're talking about actual radio waves, electromagnetic waves traveling, you know, both components. Here we're talking about um, strictly the electric field side of the equation. And so, kind of a simple way to think about it is capacitive coupling is basically like 
um, if the electrical wiring in your house that's carrying these these noisy jaggedy red frequencies right that I had on my little uh, uh, graph there if that noise is traveling through the power lines of your house you you can sort of think of that as like that's one plate of the capacitor and you are the other plate of the capacitor and there's this electric field between the two of you now that's greatly simplified um, but it gives you a general idea of what we're talking about here um, as I said, if you really want to sort of understand this stuff, you need to model it. And it gets very complicated because electric fields actually induce currents in your body, just like radio waves can. But it depends on the frequency. And sometimes it's like very, you know, shallow in your skin. Sometimes it goes deeper. Da, 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 da. There's all kinds of factors involved. And it's like mega complicated. So, of course, all right, great. There's this dirty electricity thing that you got to worry about now. So well, what do you do about it? Well, for that, um, in Milham's book, he uses uh, Stetzerizer filters and a Gram Stetzer or GS meter. Uh, I think that was released way back in 2000. And um, the Gram Stetzer stuff, the Stetzerizer filters and the meter, uh, they're sort of the original dirty electricity folks. Um, there's also another company called Greenwave that makes a meter and some products. And I happen to have the, the Greenwave uh, dirty electricity meter here and I have uh, one green wave dirty electricity filter. Um, just a quick note, I actually would have purchased the Stetzer products because they're, I don't think there's very much difference between the two and Stetzer, of course, they were the originals, right? The problem is if you're in the US or Canada, uh, you're fine. The filters cost about, you know, 30 bucks a piece. And if you buy them in bulk, you get a discount for both the Stetzerizer and the green wave filters and the meter whichever company you buy it from, it's about $125, $130. I, living in France, have a slight problem. Um, to buy the Stetzerizer filters, I would have to pay 75 euros each. And of course, you generally need like a minimum of 15 of them. Um, and Greenwave, uh, again, like if you buy them in bulk, they give you a discount, except if you live internationally, and then they charge $45 each for the filters. And when you include shipping and then customs and import duties and VAT on top of that, um, these filters actually ended up costing me $59 a piece. So if you, if you make an order from outside North America, uh, you're going to pay through the nose for these things. So I just went with Greenwave because um, basically in the end it was cheaper than getting the Stetzer stuff because I live in Europe. So this is the Green Wave meter, and it, it's got a plug. Uh, of course, yours would have like an American plug, and all you do is you just plug it into your your power strip, and it says, "Ooh, that's super noisy." Uh, <clears throat> so you can see it shows 273 millivolts, and then ah, dang it, I forgot to bring the plug adapter. Uh, in any case, if I plug the filter in, <laughs> you would see the value go down, except I forgot the plug adapter. Um, in any case, there are plenty of videos out there that show you uh, how, how it works. You plug the filter in, the value goes down, yay, you're happy. Uh, this particular meter, if the, if the reading is under 100 millivolts, then, um, yeah, it's, it says, okay, that's low noise. They tell you, oh, try to get it to, like, as low as 50 or 25 um, it's worth noting that the millivolt reading on here, uh, what this meter is actually measuring is uh, more or less the change in noise over the change in time. So, so sort of like the, the voltage of the noise at, at a whole variety of frequencies, kind of like bunched together and kind of averaged over a period of time. And that gives you this, uh, this reading. On the, uh, the Gram Stetzer meter, it, it, they, they use GS units, which is actually kind of more accurate because this one is showing millivolts. It's not actually millivolts. It's sort of a time averaged collection. Yeah, it's kind of um, complicated. But the key point is that you want the value to be 100 or less. So obviously, I have uh, uh, noise here because I don't have enough meters yet. Uh, those readings are actually much lower. Uh, and then, of course, after you've taken your meter and you've measured at various points in your home, when you find high readings, all you have to do is buy one of these filters. Uh, this one is beaten up because I disassembled it to see what was inside because I'm a nerd. But uh, normally in North America, you'd have an actual plug here. I, it's a long story. I had to cut a hole in it to get it open. Um, so what's actually inside one of these things? Well, let's take a quick look. Okay.
Um, note that don't try this at home because these are like really really difficult to get apart um, Yeah, like you have to like really destroy the thing in order to get it apart So you can see inside here uh, We have you have your your live and neutral and your ground prong uh, Note that if you buy the green wave filters they come with the uh, North American style plug So you have to buy a plug adapter on top of, of the cost of the filter. So that actually increased the price by a few dollars as well. Uh, but inside, it's kind of hard to see here. I'll show you a schematic in a minute. But uh, basically, you have a, a three giant, uh, they are metallized polypropylene uh, X2 class EMI capacitors. Uh, one, two, three big honking capacitors. And then inside here, you can see there's two resistors. They're 100 and about 111K each. And then right down in there, you can see maybe there's two little capacitors. Those are, uh, they look like single layer ceramic capacitors uh, that are connected from um, ground to live and ground to neutral. The, the main three capacitors and resistors are just connected across live and neutral. So um, yeah, that's what's inside the filter. What the inside of the filter looks like in terms of a schematic is that. Um, essentially, you have a, a 10 microfarad uh, giant capacitor, you have a second 10 microfarad cap, a 4.7 microfarad one, and then you have two, they're actually 222K, uh, but it's, you know, within tolerance, roughly 220K resistors. And then you have two capacitors that appear to be 220 picofarads, the little tiny ceramic blue ones between ground and neutral and ground and live. Uh, so you can actually simplify this circuit down where basically across live and neutral, you just have a single 24.7 microfarad capacitor and a single 111K ohm resistor. Uh, the resistor is just there so that when you unplug the device, uh, the capacitor, the big honking capacitor will discharge through the resistor and therefore you won't uh, electrocute yourself or get a nasty shock. So now you're probably wondering, well, how the heck do these filters actually work? And in short, uh, it's basically just a capacitor across live and neutral, and capacitors tend to resist a change in voltage. So uh, when the voltage is a little bit low, the capacitor will tend to supply current from its, it's, it's kind of like a, a, a water tank, if you will. It'll tend to supply charge and raise the voltage back up, and when the voltage is a little bit low, uh, it will tend to absorb current or sink current. Um, that's kind of a simplified explanation of what it's doing, but it gives you a general idea that the capacitor is simply sort of stabilizing the voltage. And since the noise, that squiggly red line, is basically much higher frequency than, than the 50 or 60 hertz of the AC, uh, it tends to take those crazy ripples and just sort of smooth them out and make the sine wave equal again. And voila, you have no more dirty electricity, which means you have no more uh, capacitive coupling, which means you have no more crazy nasty health effects like various types of cancer and ADHD and all kinds of other good stuff. Now, of course, you may be thinking, uh, if you're electrically minded, well, yeah, but isn't that sort of taking noisy voltage and just converting it into noisy current? Uh, that would be a problem, but if your electrical wiring is done well, uh, most likely it is not. If you think of uh, an AC cable you know, running through your wall to a power outlet, for example, uh, you have uh, three wires, ground, but we'll consider just the live and the neutral, they're running side by side. If you take that live and neutral, you, you know, at any given point, you got live and neutral, current's going this way in one wire and this way in the other wire, so they're each going to create a magnetic field, but it's going to cancel each other out if the wires are close together. If you take that live and neutral and you space them apart, you get a much larger net magnetic field, which of course, then you have to worry about the magnetic field on top of the electric field. So as long as the electrical wiring in your house is done properly, um, you should be pretty much okay. So my own results with the dirty electricity meters were actually pretty interesting. Uh, I used the handy little meter here, and I discovered that uh, there were a couple places where there were lots of computers and such, that uh, the readings were 2,000, uh, 1,400, uh, 6 or 700. <clears throat> and what I found was at first I kind of spread the filters equally around the house, and that lowered the levels, you know, in where all the computers are and stuff, but, um, and it lowered levels in bedrooms and such, and like, well, that was good, but 
um, the in the noisy areas it didn't really lower it enough so then what I did is I took all the filters like out of the bedrooms for example and put them all in where all the computers and the noisiest equipment was and the result was that the levels are now just about a hundred the the, the the areas where it used to be like 2000 or 1400 are now 100 or less between 60 and 100 and I noticed when I did that that upstairs in the bedrooms uh, suddenly the, some some rooms that were like at like 300 they dropped down to like 60 or 70 so you really have to kind of do some experiments you have to sort of uh, play around with it you get the meter you test every room in your house and you find the noisiest spots reduce the noise by using uh, one or more filters in the noisiest rooms and after you've done that go around and measure everything again and you'll probably find that uh, you need more filters in some areas than others um, yeah it's um, it's pretty tricky because it's 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 not really like a like a linear logical thing um, there are many factors that can influence you know how dirty electricity you know couples and it's like you can take a filter and you can put it here and it's almost like squishing a balloon where it's like you know this part of the balloon is fat so you squish it and then the other part of the balloon goes Whoosh! and the noise just sort of moves over here uh, into another room and then you put a filter there and it appears somewhere else and so you have to kind of do a little bit of experimenting uh, and also don't try and shoot for zero uh, if you have you know values of like 2000 that's really not good uh, if you have values around 100 uh, you're you're pretty much safe uh, unless you're particularly EMS sensitive and then you may want to use more filters but uh, note that the um, Graham and Stetzer and even the Greenwave folks basically say point blank that there's kind of this this point of diminishing returns where you can you can keep adding more and more filters but you're never going to get it really really low so um, yeah finally uh, I actually need some more filters I've gotten the levels lower um, I'll probably do a video later and report on any uh, positive effects I noticed um, it's kind of too too soon to say anything for sure but um, I would like to get some more filters but I mentioned that they were ridiculously expensive uh, to get them here in France so um, I took this filter apart and I had my little schematic and I'm, I ordered a bunch of components so in the near future I will do a video on how to build your own dirty electricity filters uh, and uh, we'll see how that goes I you know they may explode or they may work we'll, we'll find out uh, but in any case I encourage you to read uh, Samuel Milham's book Dirty Electricity if you want to know more about this because the cases that he that he went through uh, it's it's pretty interesting and that's that's pretty much it's a short book it's like 100 and 120 130 pages or something um, it's an easy read and I encourage you to check that out uh, of course I'll put links down in the description to all the stuff I've talked about uh, including the the Stetzer and Greenwave sites and yeah if you have any experience with dirty electricity yourself let me know in the comments below if you have any questions fire away and yeah that's about it for more techie tips see scottystech.info thanks for watching see you next time